Um, so that's pretty much the entire game right there, minus the math editor, which I'll show you real quick. So let me go ahead and load that up. It's actually a separate program. So this is our map editor. Um, you can see that we have the same grid layout that we had before. Um, and what we can actually do is define our path dynamically. So I can sit here and I can pick corner pieces and straight pieces and define my path. I'll go ahead and just make a basic one. It's a very basic path. Here's a starting flag and an ending flag so I know exactly where they started, exactly where they ended. And down here I can define, this is where I can start defining my waves. So these are our nice little hovercrafts right here. So I can say I want, you know, 10 of these. Um, these are our helicopters. I want two of those. These are our hovers. I want five of those. Tanks, say three, three of those. Um, this is our mob delay. So this is measured in milliseconds. This is the amount of time in between each mob that is fed out with a single wave. So I wanna say every 500 milliseconds. So every half a second is gonna feed out another mob. Um, this is our wave delay. So this is how long to wait until the next wave comes out. And this is measured in seconds. So I will say five seconds. And then I can add it and you can see you know, we have an ID, wave IDs, um, hovers, hummers, helicopters, tanks, the mob delay, and the wave delay. If I want to go back and edit one of these, I can. I can go through and, you know, change this. Oh, I want this one to be 12, this one, you know, to be 250 milliseconds every quarter of a second. Or I can click to remove one. And I can add as many waves as I want. You know, it's, there's no limit on the amount of waves that you can have. This is all kind of left up to the, the level designer. So let's go ahead and throw some, so throw some rocks out here, kind of fill in some spaces where we don't want the user to be able to play. Kind of make it look a little difficult. So then we have multiple tabs. So this was our wave tab. And so let's, let's define more information about our particular mobs. So our hovers default have a thousand health, um, but let's say I wanted to make them really difficult and I wanted to make, give them you know two hundred thousand health. I could define that here. Um, this is the amount of speed, and this is the amount of money that it rewards if you destroy that particular mob. So this defines all the different attributes for our mobs. Same here. This is for our towers. So we have the amount of damage that our gun towers do. This is the gun towers. And how much money it rewards. This is our laser towers, our lightning towers, our artillery towers, our nuke tower, and our chrono tower. And over here we can define, well, how much base health we want to start out with, how much money do we want to start off with. So this sort of gives you a full, it, this sort of allows you to easily define a lot of things about the game. You can balance each level individually um, and then let the genetic algorithms crunch that information and then load it up in the game and actually have a deployable game that you can, you know, a deployable level to sync with your game. So we can then save this. Go ahead and move this in the frame. And we'll, we'll call this, you know, the demonstration level. So it saves it into an XML file. Um, let me go ahead and actually show you the XML file real quick. Let's see. Yeah, let's go ahead and open it with Notepad. So let me get this in the frame. So you can see that in this XML file we have definitions of the path. Um, this is where all of the different IDs, tile IDs. R, this is the the type of tile that it is. You know, one is a straight piece, two is a rotation piece. The amount of rotation in degrees, the column number, the roll number, um, etc. These are our obstacles. Um, these are where we have placed our obstacles in the the world. These are the three waves that we had defined. 
So we have our time gap, our time intervals, mob A, mob B, mob C, mob D. Um, this is the information about our mobs, and this is the information about our towers. Um, up here, you can see this is where we set the starting and ending flags. So the starting side, the ending side, um, just what tile positions that these are at, the amount of starting money and the amount of starting health. Um, all the information in these XML documents is what we need to load up into our main game. So if I go load up our so if I go load up our game now and load that level I'll turn off the sound you're gonna have music coming up right now so I can then select a level Call it the, here's the demonstration level right here. And I can start. We'll go through the entire load process. And what you'll see is you'll see the map that we had just defined. Um, at least that's what we should see. And there you go. So you can see here's our, our simple map that we had created. You can have our starting position, our ending position, all the rocks and trees and everything that we had defined. And I can sit here and play this. So this is our project. Um, what we had set out to do was show a complete development cycle. So we go all the way from level designing, balancing the game, to being able to test the game using the genetic algorithms, all the way to being able to play the game. Um, and this is what we came up with. Um, if you have, if you want any more information about me or, um, the game or any other projects that I've done, feel free to check out CameronFerguson.net and, um, feel free to look around.